Today, I want to finally talk about maternal colonialism. The reason why I even started this channel to begin with under an hour woman fight was to protest and to denounce um, all of these pro-colonialist feminist theorists and authors that are basically brainwashing our young women into believing that there is nothing of value, nothing of importance in our culture. We are presented our culture as indigenous people, as Nicantlaca people, through the eyes of Europeans. And in my knowledge, in my quest for knowledge, in you know becoming a member of the Mexica movement, all I knew was Cheri Moraga, Gloria Saldua, Sandra Cisneros. I just knew the pro-colonialist feminist um, approach to history. I didn't understand who I was. And so it was a very powerful experience to understand that machismo, because we're raised to think it's a Mexican thing. It's a, it's a Mexican Central American thing, right? That it's definitive of our culture and if it's definitive of our men, but it's not. Through the process of learning your history, of decolonizing yourself, you start understanding that our history um, has been told through the eyes, obviously, of white supremacy, of Eurocentricity. And uh, a lot of our women, a lot of the Chicana, were now they're called Latina feminists, self-identified Latina feminists, they took on that perspective and they write, they wrote all these books, um, speaking as mestiza, speaking as as colonized people and not really asking and not really um, trying to decolonize themselves, but basically passively accepting that colonized mentality. And so in learning my history, learning my, my understanding my history and decolonizing, you start to realize that feminism, you have to look at the root, you know, let's not try to make it seem that, you know, it, our ancestors um, had feminism because we didn't. Feminism, by its historical creation, from what it really meant, from the very beginning of it, was the white woman's approach was their denouncing uh, how appalled they were that they were being treated like 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 women were being treated, like black men were being treated. They were like, wait a second, we're above these people. Why are you treating us like your inferiors where you and I, white man, are superior to these races? So what white supremacy did and what they did on, on our continent was the sexist mentality that they had in Europe when they came here, when they invaded us, when white women started coming over and joining the, the colonialism and all these genocidal machines, they said, wait a second, you know, how are you treating us inferior when actually they're the inferior ones, these primitive, these savages, right? And so the creation of feminism was their reaction to trying to get a piece of that white supremacist pie. And a great um, caption of this, and I'm going to read for you from this great book that is a very honest telling of what really took place during the suffragist movement, um, what birthed feminism in the so-called U.S., is this book called White Women's Rights, The Racial Origins of Feminism in the United States by Louise Michelle Newman. This is a great book that tells you candidly um, what it was like for in, um, indigenous women and also uh, other women, you know, that were not white and how we were viewed. Okay. So feminism is what uh, I've heard this um, concept before. I don't know where exactly where it came from, but this, this aspect of uh, feminism, what we're talking about is maternal colonialism. Okay, even though they're talking about the third wave of feminism and all this, feminism was created for white women to get the fruits of white supremacy. They wanted to also be part of the white supremacist world. Even though we try to twist it and shape it and make it reflect who we are, it has no business in our culture because we as Nicantlaca women, we as indigenous women, we didn't need feminism. Okay, the concept of machismo comes from Europe. The concept of not educating a woman because she's a woman comes from Europe, okay? Let us not forget that our ancestors were the first to have mandatory education for males and females, okay? We were the first to have mandatory education. In our societies, we had doctors, priests, poets, writers, merchants, and I will talk more about that in other videos, and I have talked about that for lots of years. Um, but today, I want to talk about maternal colonialism. Let me read you a very, I think, a, a, 
a very this summary this as this paragraph basically summarizes what this book is about and it's a great interpretation of what took place and they're talking about social darwinism obviously eurocentricity another word for white supremacy and the birth of of the suffragist movement or the women's the white women's movement the simultaneous development of two ideologies, women's rights and social Darwinism, accompanied and made possible white women's entry into the public sphere at a time when new corporate and monopolistic forms of capitalism were creating vast differences in wealth between an educated white manager, um, managerial class and an impoverished, often immigrant and non-white working class. Social Darwinian theory is encouraged and enabled to develop the development of ideologies concerning white middle class women's emancipation and emphasized white women's specific role as the conservators of race, of race traits and the civilizers of racial and class inferiors. The Anglo-Saxon Protestant women's self-proclaimed burden at the turn of the century was to help her nation in rescuing these so-called primitive and working class peoples from stagnation and decay, to protect them from the violent abuses of the U.S. government and primitive and working class women from the supposed abuses of their men and to assimilate evolutionary inferiors into a more advanced Christian civilization. White women who participated in domestic and foreign missionary societies in the local, national, and world temperance movements, in the settlement house movement, in the international peace movement, in any of the organized white women's movements at the turn of the century, built their institutions on the premise that they, as Anglo-Saxon Protestant women, were the best conveyors of advanced civilization. Supporters of the Women's Settlement House Movement could be quite candid about the relations this ideology produced between themselves and the objects of their civilizing efforts. Catherine Coleman, a professor at Wellesley College, observed, another quote, a settlement is a colony planted in a strange land by immigrants from a superior civilization. Who house has become a potent force in the civilizing of the great city wilderness where it was planted? So that's a great summary of what feminism was and the truth behind the origins of feminism. Okay, in the essays that I have and the videos that I have um, presented, we in the Mexica movement are talking about this. We are talking about denouncing Eurocentric ideologies and not using Eurocentric ideologies as the measure of justice and as the, the actual um, origins of what's going to liberate us. Something that was created for Europeans or whatever a concept and ideology will only benefit them because it was created and intended to benefit them no recognition no inclusion no respect about us the nicantlaca people so let us not forget that feminism is maternal colonialism it is the white woman trying to get her piece of the white supremacist pie on our continent I will talk about more issues regarding what our women actually did, the type of um, roles that we held before 1492. We need to cleanse ourselves from that Eurocentric view that tells us that our ancestors were uncivilized and that women were treated like crap and that European women um, are the, the prime examples of womanhood. And this book is a great example, an honest conversation on the truth behind feminism and it is it is called the female aspect of colonialism maternal colonialism that is what feminism is machismo is not mexican machismo does not belong to our culture we have to denounce every ideology and every concept that has infected us for the last 500 years Think about it. I will talk more about this in future videos to come. But for now, that is a great introduction to start understanding the history behind feminism. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, please message me any questions, any thoughts that you have. Share with me what you know about this. And I will be making more videos. Thank you very much. Siklali from the Mexica Movement.